Welcome to the Waterboy and Equipment Manager podcast. Game three just ended. My name is Safe Basaria. My name is Shawan Zamani. I'm Case Charania. I'm Nabil Hassanali. And we got a special guest with us today. The man, the myth, the legend, the dude who watches way too much NBA film. Irfan, come on, talk to us. What's, what's up? What's up, fellas? How you doing? Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. I'm excited. Excited yeah. to talk basketball. I'm excited to hear your perspective. Irfan brings something different to the table. We don't necessarily break down film as much as Irfan does on his socials. Um, so, Irfan, if you want to plug that Twitter, I know you have a specifically a NBA film breakdown Twitter that, that you run. You want, you want to plug that real quick for the listeners so they can follow you there? Yeah, uh, I appreciate that. It's uh, just at NBA Film Room. Um, I've, I've been getting more into, like, college scouts and, like, scouting, too. So, like, I put, put those scouting reports out as well. But I just, like – getting into like the nitty and gritty of the game and like the X's and O's. So just at any level, really, even high school, um, I just enjoy it. So, you know, it's at NBA film. Room. Absolutely. Can, sure yeah, this, this, yeah, this, this episode may or may not be Irfan's audition to join the podcast. <laughs> we'll see how the listeners react. I don't think he it. has to audition. Bro. I was like, let's, yeah. see how the, <laughs> let's see how the listeners feel about it. And how about we see how Irfan feels about it first. But uh, Shaban, you want to plug that Instagram real quick? Yeah, it's at Waterboy and Equipment Manager. Okay, you want to plug that Twitter real quick? Talking to me? Yeah, Kays, you want to plug the Twitter? <laughs> He's a water boy manager. Yeah, I didn't and I know there wanna... was more than one Kays on this podcast, bro. <laughs> Nabil, you want to hit YouTube real quick? YouTube.com, YouTube.com forward slash the water boy and equipment manager podcast. Apparently, Nabil has not, you know, finished himself in a couple of days. YouTube.com, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Bro, English, <laughs> English apparently is not my first language. All right, All right so, let's let's act our age, not our shoe size here. Uh, yeah, that's that's probably fair. Uh, the Lakers lost today against the Miami Heat. The final score was one fifteen to one oh four. Jimmy Butler had a forty point triple double. Let's get started with talking about the Miami Heat. They earned a lot of respect from us on the podcast, the social media, if they didn't already, which they already did for a lot of people, including us here on this podcast. Here, fun. I don't know if you know, but we've been calling the Heat to be in the NBA Finals for like three or four months now. We loved them in the beginning. We thought Heat culture would carry them through the bubble because they were just more conditioned. They were just going to play harder, and they did. They beat up a lot of teams that maybe they were better than, maybe they weren't better than, but it didn't matter. They played harder than them either way, and that's what got them here so far in the NBA Finals, and we knew there was no quit in this team regardless of whether they're missing Goran Dragic or Bam Adebayo. Shaban, let's start with you. What did you see from the Miami Heat today besides Jimmy Butler? Because that's the obvious that you liked today. Uh, I really liked how they like how they really went after Anthony Davis. They, you know, uh, they had primarily had Jay Crowder on him. And then when they got that entry pass into Anthony Davis, they just had Jimmy Butler help and they had they just uh, trapped him really easily. They forced a lot of turnovers on his part, got him into foul trouble early Uh you know, it really frustrated him. You know, that's he didn't play a lot of minutes in the first half. Uh, and I think that was like one of the big factors. You know, they they literally took AD out of the game. Well, I think that's kind of a big deal. Yeah, Case, what did you see that you liked, man, from the Miami Heat today? I mean, they just played harder. They wanted to win more. And you see that sometimes out of Miami. and They'll just grind you out and kill you. And they screwed up a couple of times, let the Lakers come back. But they got it together, finished the game strong. And you can't say anything, but Jimmy Butler's fucking fantastic. Yeah, Jimmy Butler yeah. is pretty good at basketball. Irfan, what'd man. you see that you like? Jimmy's liked a dog, man. Oh, he no is. joke. He's what'd you see, Irfan? What'd you like from the Miami Heat today? Break it um, down. I just liked, I just liked uh, how the Heat attacked the basket today. Um, you know, they, I think game one, they had more points in the paint than the Lakers did. I mean, obviously, they got blown out. Game two, they it was like very lopsided. But game three, they had... I don't, I don't know the numbers, but it was probably like in double digits, more points in the paint. Um, yeah. And, you know, that, that put a lot of, you know, uh, onus on like the referees to make fouls. Obviously, Scott Foster, you know, or good old Scott Foster. Um, <laughs> so hopefully, I thought, I thought that's why I thought, you know, I looked at the referees time and I was like, yo. Uh, it was Scott Foster and but, Tony Brothers, I think. Right. Uh, it was, yes, yeah, so it was Tony Brothers as well. So, um, so, yeah, I just like the way that he attacked the basket. And, you know, obviously they're a really good three point shooting team, but. Uh, even Duncan Robinson put the ball on the floor a few times today and got to the rim, got fouled. So that was good to see. Yeah. So the number you're looking for, by the way, it's uh, in points in the paint, it's 52 to 34 in favor of Miami. Well, I mean, that proves the point. You said over double digits and surprise, surprise. That's quite literally. I mean, look, we saw Jimmy go in and just hammer whoever was guarding him so many times. Poor KCP was put on absolute skates. It looks like he was, uh, he was out on a fundraiser tonight 
trying to pay some bills for the for the kids to get books in their in their libraries this tonight. But Nabil, what did you see from the Miami Heat that you liked? What'd you like? You're really gonna make me follow up Airfon, aren't you? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't no, gonna was be actually, me, motherfucker. So it had to be was, you. <laughs> I'm aware. I know why you did that. No, nah, I was. I was actually gonna say the same thing Airfon did. I mean, Kelly and Olenek, I think finished with 25 points tonight. 17. Uh, sorry. Wait. What? Oh, sorry. 24, yeah, yeah, sorry. 24 last, last game, game. 17 this game. My bad. My yes, bad. Yeah. Yes, 17 yes. this game. Dude was. I mean, he was so effective on the floor tonight on both ends of the court. You know, he knew what his role was. He executed very well. And again, it goes back to what Irfan said, that inside presence of just scoring, it opened the floor for Jimmy Butler. It opened the floor for just the dribble penetration was insane tonight. And I think that was the key to Miami winning. Absolutely. Absolutely agree with you. Here's a fun little stat. I'm interested. So the Lakers put up, what's, what's today's date? Well, the, the, the day of the game, what was the date? Do you guys remember? The fourth. The fourth. The fourth. So 10-4 and the Lakers dropped 104 points on 10-4. Oh that was pretty oh interesting. God. And, and. 10 years ago, 11 years ago, in 2009, when the Lakers won in five games, they lost game three to the Orlando Magic, having dropped 104 points as well. And they still finished that 4-1 series. There's your little fucking conspiracy theory for the week. Um, But look, the Miami Heat, obviously. If we're throwing fun stats out there, Myers Leonard has not missed a shot in the finals. (laughs) Yes. Actually, that is true. Uh, Yeah. Myers Leonard is clearly the key to the Heat championship. Neither has Udonis Haslam if we're going there. Neither has Udonis Haslam. Udonis Haslam provides. But Myers Leonard has taken a shot. So, (laughs) but going going back to Jimmy. At least one attempt. But going back to Jimmy. (laughs) uh, Minimum one attempt. Hey, he's (laughs) seven for seven. You can come at me all you want. Yeah, that's oh pretty God. impressive. Seven percent is impressive. Kays, by the way, is the president of the Myers Leonard fan club. Not Myers Leonard's <laughs> wife. It's Kays. It's Kays. But, Kays. Yeah. Not Myers Leonard's wife. But yo, so We're going back to chairs, it's okay. So going back to Jimmy, you know, uh, here's a fun fact. Do you know what Jimmy Butler's first career playoff triple double is? Today. Tonight. It was this one. Yeah, it's yeah. a forty yeah. point triple double in his very first finals. Just outstanding performance by yeah, my, Chabon, my Is that the one where you and I, you, Safe, and I got mad because we thought Stan Van Gundy said something stupid today? And it was actually that. Oh. Was that. I, I thought that motherfucker said it's Jimmy Butler's first finals triple double of his career. And we were like, yeah, no shit, you fucking dumb nut. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. I mean, I swear, Jeff, by the way, Jeff Van Gundy. And Jeff Van Gundy, sorry. Stan Van that Gundy. Guy, I, I, every game I hear him per, like, do, like say something, I'm like, yeah, he's great. And then by the end of the game, I'm like, never mind. This guy's a clown. There's a reason why he he has his moments. Jeff Jeff Van Gundy's agent is the greatest sports agent in human history because that motherfucker's name is in every coaching job opening, and he hasn't coached in like 15 years. So, surprise, surprise. So, my favorite stat of tonight, Andre Iguodala minus to finish the game, minus 13. (laughs) (laughs) They won the game. But anyway. Minus 13 in 17 minutes. Yeah. From from the Miami Heat, the best thing – you guys already hit on it. It is the aggression. They played more aggressive. They weren't afraid of anybody tonight. And you could see it. The demeanor went from Jimmy Butler to then apparently Tyler Harrow, who will probably get dunked on by LeBron next game just for LeBron to kind of show the rookie where his place is, to, if we're being honest. That scowl looked like it was, uh, it was meant for TikTok, not the NBA Finals. But it was fun. It was a good moment that will go around social media and Twitter and we'll get kicks out of it. But look, the Heat were more aggressive. They showed the Lakers what it was like, and getting Anthony Davis in foul trouble is kind of a big deal, right? The Lakers will only go as far as LeBron and Anthony Davis take them. Everybody else is secondary. We knew that before the bubble started. We knew that after the first, second, third round. Surprise, surprise, they lost the game when Anthony Davis only had 15 points. Um, He was not aggressive. He took one shot in the fourth quarter and had zero points. That is Kawhi Leonard numbers, not Anthony Davis numbers. Unacceptable from Anthony Davis in the NBA Finals. And by the way, 45-point game incoming. Don't worry about it. It's probably going to happen. Look, the difference is they're going to get him going early next time, and he's not going to get in the same kind of foul trouble. We know Scott Foster likes to, uh, to build the ratings and the suspense, and that's what we got today. The thing I did not like from the Miami Heat, and I'm going to ask you guys the same question, is last game they shot... 27 three-pointers today they only shot 34 three-pointers now they are a better three-point shooting team than the lakers they have been all season they have been in the playoffs as well they have to shoot the three ball more and they have to shoot it more efficiently they only shot 35 percent today which is one tick below league average but tyler harrow three of ten sorry duncan robinson three of ten tyler harrow two of five jay crowder two of eight surprise surprise 
Kelly Olynyk three of five, which is fantastic. Maybe he should be shooting the ball more. But some of their guys, Duncan Robinson, Tyler Harrow, and Jay Crowder specifically need to shoot the ball better. And I don't expect that necessarily from Jay Crowder because his career is longer, and we've seen that he's about slightly above average, but really average at three-point shooting. But Duncan Robinson and Tyler Harrow are clearly not. And so they need to shoot it more efficiently and probably a couple more per game. Duncan Robinson shooting 10, Tyler Harrow shooting 7. I think the Lakers are probably happy with those numbers. If they get it up a little bit more, it could be very, very big trouble. Jimmy Butler with a 40-point triple-double is not something that's going to happen every single night, and he needs help from other guys. And those guys cannot just get going in moments. They need to help him for the entire game. And so the Miami Heat need to find other ways to be more effective and not just with Jimmy Butler. And that's kind of the biggest takeaway. And by the way, Eric Spolstra is probably the right guy to help figure that out. If there is a guy that can figure it out, it is Eric Spolstra. I will say there was one thing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, There was one thing I noticed. It was when uh, Shaban touched on it as well when he was talking about what he saw from Miami. Um, Whenever AD would come in, obviously there was a trap that came in to close out on AD to double team him you were starting to see it a little bit towards the end of the third. And then he had that one shot in the fourth, but he didn't really take advantage of it where he was really starting to use his floater, the floater game to try to make sure that before that double team comes in, he gets that shot up. So where he's getting a better look at the, at the rim. Um, Miami needs to figure out how to stop Anthony Davis again, because if he starts doing that more often, this, this it's back to a blowout again, in my eyes, I, I, AD kind of, again, like I said, he showed that he's, he'd figured out how to beat that trap but he just didn't use it in the fourth quarter tonight. And I think in the next game, he will be more ready to destroy Miami again. Potentially. Yeah. I mean, Shaban, mm-hmm. what did you see from Miami that you did not like, or feel like they can do better in the next game? I think you touched on it with Duncan Robinson. Uh, he's been struggling pretty much the entire series and, you know, he's really been feeling that physical, that more, that increased physicality of the Lakers that he did not feel with the Boston Celtics. Uh, he's, you know, those, those shots are just harder to come by these days. Um, he was three for 10. I mean, like he shot 10 shots, so he was clearly been more aggressive. He's still trying to look for a shot. Uh, but if he, if Miami is trying to, you know, continue to build on this momentum, he's got to hit those shots. And some of those shots were wide open looks, you know, it wasn't even like the guys were even on him in particular. Uh, they were just really good looks and he just couldn't make them. Yeah. Or fine. What, what do you got? What are you following up with? Would you, what do you want to see from the heat better next game? Uh, well, I definitely think they need to sprinkle in some of the zone next game, depending on if Adebayo is playing or not, just because like, I don't think you give LeBron the same look. Um, I mean, they did a good job of like keeping, I, I also think it was a, of LeBron not being as aggressive on the pick and roll. Um, but you know, they took away all his aggressiveness by, you know, whenever hero or uh, Robinson was involved now, they would just basically not double team, but they would really show really high. And obviously, I think LeBron's going to have an answer for that next game. Uh, so I'm excited to see how the Heat counter that because, you know, they don't, the Heat don't want to just keep switching Robinson or Hero on to LeBron because then I'd have to bring a double team and, you know, shit starts falling away from there. But uh, uh, that's the adjustment I'm, I want to see next game. So, Yeah, Casey, did you have anything else you wanted to follow with on the Heat? Nothing unique. I think they got to bring the same intensity. I don't think they've played the same way each game. But they will need to defend better because I guarantee you AD is not going to have this bad a game again. And I do see them throwing in that zone a little more, but I don't think it'll be too long. Yeah, I mean, one thing I'll say about my bad. Well, one thing I'll say about AD is I was just look. I was looking at somebody tweeted. They were like, uh, in the regular season, he shot forty two percent from mid range, and he's been shooting fifty one percent in the playoffs. Obviously, he's not like a big three point shooting percentage, and he'll get his shots at the rim, but like. If those mid range aren't falling, like those turnaround, like um, Shavon was talking about, he hit in the at the end of the third quarter, beginning of the fourth. Like those are those are tough shots, and like if Miami's gonna live with them, you know, I think J- uh, Van Gundy was talking about, like, you know, yeah, you have to live with those. Like, but but you know, if he's settling for those mid range shots, like you know, it is what it is. If you lose on that, you know, or Rondo shooting, or or the shots where the percentages aren't like high, or the points of possession aren't high, like I think you have to live with that because you're under man already, you know, so just playing the numbers at that point that's fair Nabil, did you want to add anything before we, we move on to the lakers here no you're good yeah. all right well then what do we what do we like from the lakers the lakers lost obviously they they went on runs the game got fun and interesting at times the lakers even led a couple of times in this game especially once towards the end of the third early fourth quarter but obviously the heat won by 11 points so what do we like from the lakers tonight case do you want to start us off here yeah, i think kuzma finally showed up a little bit 
I think he saw the petition on Twitter that if the <laughs> Lakers win a ring, he should get one. And that really oh got God. to they, him. They did him dirty, man. Real Laker fans love that. Was that was fucked up. That was dirty. That was real dirty. Well, no, he was one of the two shining spots tonight, him and Markeith Morris. Yeah. LeBron had a LeBron day, and you can't really say he had a bad game either. 25, what is it, 10 and 8. Mm-hmm. And yeah. two blocks. Eight turnovers you could work on, but – it was also the first time any player has outscored, out-rebounded, and out-assisted LeBron in a finals game. That's yeah, crazy. and most that of those turnovers, by, most, yeah, most of those turnovers on the Lakers side, they were just forced turnovers by Miami. You know, just getting those, just getting those steals, trapping. You know, just turnovers. good, just great. Yeah, just great defense. Yeah. All right. I'm well, Irfan, what, what did you like? Well. What did you like from the Lakers tonight? Well, um. They they weren't chucking as many threes today, so I I like that. Obviously, the Heat weren't playing zone, um, but they also just made more shots. Hey man, they they only chucked five less threes this game than last game. Forty seven to forty. Hey, I mean, just, I feel like no, I feel like at the end, like the, uh, some of those shots, you know, like you got three, four threes at the end of the game, we're just chucking some, some bullshit. But I, like, it just seemed, yeah, it just seemed like they were obviously the pace of the game in game two was a lot higher, but like it just seemed like. They 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 were, it didn't seem like they were settling for threes, but like because they were they were wide open shots. But you know, at a certain point, like you have to realize why you're open. You know, what I'm saying like there's a reason <laughs> Russo and Rondo Rondo passed up a lot of open shots, which really fucked up the flow of their offense. Like he was driving it, and he obviously made some of those layups, but you know, it really stymies the offense when you know you don't shoot those wide open shots. Yeah, Rondo had a grand total of. Four points. On two oh, of hey, eight One shooting. of those was so lucky off the top of the glass. Hey, that was yes, an absurd oh land. You literally see that and you go, there's no fucking way yeah. he knew that. Yeah, like, perfect. I'm just glad he didn't do the little Steph Curry thing after. You know, he didn't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, the biggest thing I saw from the Lakers tonight that I liked is that some of the other role guys that haven't been super great got going. Now, we know something about the Lakers that everybody talks about it's hard to tell which role guy will show up every single night. We know somebody will because somebody has every single night for the entire playoffs thus far, but it's hard to tell who will be that guy. It's been Rondo from certain nights. It's been, it's been Caruso. It's been uh, KCP. It has not been Danny green at any point in the playoffs. Oh my God. Because Danny green is on the back of a milk carton. Cause that motherfucker is still missing man shot. Check it out. Oh, for six and oh, for four from three surprise, surprise, a grand total of two points all from the free throw line. Danny green, you make 15 million bucks. I could go 0 for 6 from the field for a, a, one hundredth of what you make, buddy. Please Dude, fuck be, that. Give me a dollar. I'll go 0, be better. 0 for 8. Please be better. Please, please, please be better. But look, the beauty of it is Kuzma has been not so good in these playoffs because his role is different. I'm not expecting him to score 18 points a game like he did last year or the year before. He's averaging 12 or 13 points again this season. Give me 12 or 13 points in the playoffs, right, this season. And, and he's not necessarily done that game in and game out tonight. He looked really good. He looked very confident. He didn't look afraid of the moment, and hopefully he can do something when he's attacking bench units in the next couple of games in these finals because Kyle Kuzma, as everybody has talked about, is actually really important to the Lakers' ability to score the basketball. He's one of the few guys I actually trust, air quotes, trust, in making shots and, and scoring the bucket. Uh, Nabil, what did you see from the Lakers you like tonight, man? Uh, I think it was actually touched on by Kays. I mean, Markeith Morris, <laughs> it was funny because I was making fun of him when we were watching the game, but he shot, what, 5 of 11 from 3 tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dude, he was uh, – the Lakers were giving him the ball. He was shooting it, and he was, he was making a shot. So, I think that was very impressive to see from him. But, I mean, you touched on it in general. It's what role players are going to show up tonight. And it's – the Lakers kind of need – not everyone to show up because it's kind of – it's an unrealistic expectation. But I need more than one guy off the bench to show up. I can't just rely on Markeith Morris or Kyle Kuzma or Alex Caruso at one night just to show up. I need multiple guys to come together and be a cohesive bench unit. We just haven't seen that yet. And, and – Yes, obviously LA's up two one, so it's no no need to panic. But um, I did enjoy seeing Marquise Morris hit his shots. Um, and that was just very nice to see. Yeah, definitely. Look, the biggest takeaway for me on the Lakers, what I didn't like to see, is they lost the turnover battle by a lot. It was nineteen turnovers to twelve turnovers, and they lost by eleven points. Take a wild guess why? When you have seven more turnovers than the other team, in all likelihood, that's probably going to hurt. Um, obviously Anthony Davis not scoring more than 15 points and taking only one shot in the fourth quarter hurts. But in all honesty, I think all of us here on this podcast, including everybody that watches basketball understands that he will not likely shoot only one shot of any fourth quarter ever again in these NBA finals. I don't think that that's something that I'm going to cry about because he'll be fine. Right. Anthony Davis is a very good basketball player. Surprise, surprise. 
But the Lakers cannot lose the turnover battle by seven turnovers. That is completely unacceptable. And it's something they got to work on. LeBron had eight tonight. And like Shaban said, a lot of them were first forced turnovers. They were not him just tossing the ball out of bounds. It was that he played good defense. Well, LeBron James knows how to move the ball around too. And so those guys either have to hit open shots or he's got to make better decisions. And I'm not super concerned about LeBron's decision-making process here. Right? He had eight turnovers, though. You got to fix that. No, no but Steve, like, yeah. yeah. The one I mean, thing yeah, is like sure. they had they had ten turnovers in the first quarter. They were only down three, and they had I guess three three point three through every quarter on average. Yeah, and they still lost the game. So I don't know if like like it was like they they played really good defense and they they battled those turnovers. But like I don't know if like the shots they were getting were quality shots. Yeah, sure. But like, but mm-hmm. as you yeah. said, there were ten in the first quarter. There were six in the yeah. fourth quarter. Six were, in the fourth quarter. Right. Okay, so they didn't turn the ball over second and third quarter. Not not nearly as much, much, right? So they, they kind of tightened it up. Okay. And by the way, we saw it in those games. Those games were, I mean, those quarters were quite tight. Um, yeah. Right? So the, the Lakers looked good enough. They only lost the second quarter by one point and the third quarter by one point, right? And the fourth quarter, they lost by six points and lost the game by 11. Yeah. So they when you turn the ball over. Quarter. Wow. Yeah, they, they lost every that single really quarter in this, in this game today. Um, but look, the Lakers did not look like the better team tonight. They probably didn't deserve to win this game tonight. The Heat came to play, and they earned the game, and I'm not going to I'm not gonna fault them for that. But the Lakers have to reduce the turnover. Six in the fourth quarter, ten in the first quarter, like Erfan, you talked about. Unacceptable. Unacceptable mm-hmm. for a team that plans to win the championship. But kudos to the Heat because turnovers don't just happen. They're usually for a good reason, and the Heat made that happen today. But, yeah, Erfan, yeah. what do you not like from the Lakers that you hope they improve on next game besides, obviously, turnovers? Uh, what I not like, well, I didn't like, well, obviously AD wasn't in a rhythm. I think you have to get him in a rhythm, but also don't think that like, I think you can switch anything with AD. I, I think sometimes they're hesitant to switch, even when he's playing the four, when he's playing the five, they're more likely to switch. But when he's playing the four and Javel or Dwight has been on the four, I don't think they're as, uh, like when they do switch, like, it's just, it's not a good, because Dwight Howard is clogging up the paint I don't think it's very uh good in in, for their defense it just puts them in a bad situation yeah it's not Uh, spacing friendly exactly and and when he's a five it's different because he can just roam around and run around um and you know you don't really have to worry he's he's basically there you don't have to worry about that and I think that um like when he's playing the four that option isn't there so I think they definitely need to get better at that maybe give him some more minutes at the five obviously Dwight and JaVale haven't been playing as much um yeah, I don't, I don't keep 14 minutes number. tonight JaVale obviously DNP yeah so I, I just think I don't even know if Dwight like you can play him that long it's just because if you're not getting offensive rebounds then you're not really doing anything because you're not throwing you the ball down there so like yeah. everything is <laughs> going through LeBron right yeah absolutely Dwight's not getting yeah. any post touches like that yeah. anymore is that yeah, yeah. offensive rebounding if they're not in his zone? Then what's what really does not saying Dwight Howard is a bad player, but like his value is not, uh, when, especially if you have to guard Olympic or Leonard on the wing, you have to run long closeouts. That's not his game. So I think AD at five more is going to be better for them next game. Absolutely. Um, maybe even yeah. starting AD at the five and Kuzma, yeah. maybe or Marquise Moore, somebody like that who has gained confidence in game three, even though they lost, you know, carry that into game four. For sure. Shaban, you want to jump in here? Talk about some yeah. of the improvements you'd like to see? Uh, I mean, y'all kind of like really touched on it. Uh, you know, uh, AD is uh, a big one. I mean, because, you know, taking one shot in the fourth quarter and, and you know, it's usually it's uh, usually it's fine when like when a superstar is just, you know, when he was just getting swarmed, right? You saw that like he was getting triple teamed like as soon as he got the ball. But, you know, attempting two free throws, that was a that was big for me, you know. If you think it's about like AD's got to like show a little bit more aggressiveness about, you know, he's got to shoot a love like a more than like he's got to get to the line like more than like twice. You know, he's got to be able to, you know, assert his will without like causing offensive fouls or silly fouls, you know, like on the offensive end, and like get to the line. Really, if it's like, if he can't get a shot to fall, if he can't get his a, a, a good shot up, fine. Then get to the line. Because that's what they're they're sending like three guys at you. Take advantage of it. Absolutely, uh, Kays. You wanna you wanna move on with the Lakers? 
Get J.R. Smith off the fucking floor. <laughs> if I see another step back three into the corner, I'm going to do something stupid to somebody. He made one of those, though. You look like Duncan I don't care. Robinson. You... I thought he was running to the corner like Duncan Dude, Robinson those are shots I take when I'm fucking around warming up for a game. <laughs> well, I have nobody, no intention no... to shoot him. Look, in all fairness, we, we know J.R. Smith's history. Nobody told him the game was going on. That's on LeBron. He should have said, hey, what, the, game, the clock is ticking, buddy. The game's already started. JR has only been in the warm up, so how is he supposed to know the game started? He's like, oh, yeah, fuck it. We're still, it's halftime warm ups. That's what we're doing. <laughs> to, credit, to JR, the DNP. credit to JR Smith, though. He had, uh, in his five minutes of play, he had three more points than Danny Green. <laughs> <laughs> this is so sad. This is so oh, sad. Danny Green, so disappointing. Nabil, did you want to talk about the Lakers real quick before we move on? I didn't. I think you guys touched on everything. I'm not going to repeat yeah. it. AD has to get better. He's got to find his confidence and shoot that ball, even if he's missing his shots in the fourth. Okay, sounds good. That's Let's move on to Finals MVP. If the NBA Finals end with the Lakers winning, who do you guys have a Finals MVP? We talked about it the last two episodes. I just want to see if that's changed at all. Nabil, who do you have? I'm actually going to change my pick because of tonight. Um, AD showed his value with the Lakers tonight and it was kind of, he had a bad game. The Lakers lost. And I know that's a very simple basketball take. There's a lot more that goes on in the game. The game's a lot more complex than that. But when people are voting on this, AD has to have a good game for the Lakers to win. Therefore he is the most valuable player on that team. Um, I I do think AD will end up being the the finals MVP. Yes. I know what I said. You can, you can kill me for it later, but I I, I won't, I won't simply because somebody else will Irfan and Shaban are smiling so large to come at you. (laughs) So I will let Shaban go ahead. If the Lakers win the NBA finals, who is your finals MVP, sir? Uh, Well, I mean, like it was, I mean, before this game, it was like kind of neck and neck between AD and LeBron. Uh, But you know, I just, I mean, like I, I get where Nabil's coming from with the, the fact that like AD brings like value to the team and that's the award is literally called the most valuable player award, but you know, LeBron like showed up tonight and you know, uh, he, uh, he hit like, he, he went one for one of five for three, but he also got to the free throw line a lot. You know, he found other ways to get to the rim, be more productive and get to like, you know, be more conducive to the team. You know, he played nearly 40 minutes tonight and he was by far the best Laker on the floor uh turnovers aside so i mean i uh, i think lebron gets the edge here yo fuckers this is meant to be the quick take section we're already past 30 minutes <laughs> Irfan, who is the finals mvp if the lakers win lebron not no i thought it was lebron game, after game two uh right. Ra- rahul asked me the same thing i was like after game two i was like i don't think it's a really a question like it should I mean, be like if, because if you take like the value part of it then lebron should be winning the most valuable player, but it's like who has the best season, who has the best series or, you know, so I think, I think it is LeBron right now, uh, especially after this, uh, you know, game from AD. So I, I definitely think LeBron, even before this game, I thought LeBron, but after this game, for sure, I think LeBron. Case, what do you think, man? Who do you got? Uh, I got to hop off the AD train. LeBron <laughs> has been a better player this series. I'm not saying the AD hasn't been great, but I think consistent play throughout the series matters more. Yeah, and LeBron's just been better. I yeah, I mean, look, it's been LeBron for me since before the series. After game one and two, nothing changed. Nothing changes game three. Anthony Davis is not a takeaway from him. He's a fantastic basketball player. The Lakers wouldn't be here without him. They weren't last year without him, even if LeBron was healthy all year. LeBron is more important to this team. LeBron's the Finals MVP. Uh, and honestly, at this point, it, to me, it's no contest that LeBron is the Finals MVP. But on the other hand, because now it's two one and we have a conversation at least, if the Miami Heat win the championship. It's Jimmy Butler. Does anyone disagree? No. No disagreements. It, it's Jimmy, right? Is there any disagreement at all worth having this conversation? Uh, if we had some time, oh. I'd make a case for Kelly Olenek. But, uh. <laughs> I, I had a feeling if anybody you know was, it would be the case. You, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to say, ba- I'm gonna say Bam in a bio. <laughs> yeah, no, Case, it's not your boy Myers Leonard. No, no, no. I just wanted Bam to start here for fun. Huh? It's not, it's that was Myers my Leonard. first take after game one. Myers Leonard should start. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I, 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 he definitely can spread the floor. And, like, same as Kelly Olenek. I just don't know. I guess they just kept their rotation really, really short. Uh, I guess they wanted to go small because they didn't think they could, you know, combat the Lakers with their size. But I guess we're seeing now that, you know, the Lakers are struggling a little bit with their size because they got to chase those three-point. 
like the Lakers have like bruising bigs and then the Heat have like finesse bigs. So, you know, it's good to see uh, the battle between those two. Yeah. You know? hey, it is uh, very fun to watch. Uh, hey, shout out Solomon Hill. Hey, if you come on the podcast, I will Venmo you the money for a fucking haircut. Please, Bro, for God's sake. Go Bro, to the I will barber, give you guy. the fucking haircut. <laughs> at least, at least the hair's not even that bad. Just get a fucking lineup. You look. I don't understand how you get paid millions of dollars. The same deal goes out to Jimmy Butler. Nah, I actually like the Jimmy. I, I kind of. I, I, I like, like the mustache though. Bro, he's got pews for a mustache. Look, no. Jimmy's, Jimmy has been known as a crazy man, and this this look gives him a very crazy vibe. And he's backing it up on the yeah. court, talking. Jimmy's shit. got the porn stash going. All right, no, before, he's got the pube stash. Before we call yeah, we, it, episode, right, let's call it. Before we call it an episode, we have made predictions prior to. What do you guys think the series is going to finish at? Nabil, start us off. Lakers in five. Javon? I'm sticking with Lakers in five. Irfan? Uh, I said before the series, Lakers in six or Heat in seven. I'm going to go Lakers in six. Okay. And Case? I'll keep Lakers in six. And I'm going to go Lakers in five. That is over. We will see you after game four, which is Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Until then, thanks for joining us. See ya! Peace. Bye. Peace.